the Welsh. They love their winners. I'm the undefeated super middleweight champion of the world, yet I'm still looking for the respect, the recognition, and the admiration I deserve. I know to be the best, I have to fight the best. I'm Joe Calzaghi, I'm ready, willing, and able. And I'm next on Showtime Championship Boxing. Welcome you to Europe's youngest capital. We're in the maritime city of Cardiff, Wales, a picturesque metropolis filled with historic landmarks and medieval architecture. Tonight, the natural beauty and distinctive charm of this country will play host to a favorite son who's no ordinary Joe in these parts. In our main event, it's another defense on home turf for local sensation Joe Calzaghe, who puts his WBO super middleweight crown and undefeated record on the line against former world champion and number six contender Charles the Hatchet Brewer. This one has all the elements of a slugfest. And in our co-feature, a true homecoming for unbeaten Gary the Rocket Locket, rated number five in the world by the WBO. His intercontinental junior middleweight belt is at stake versus Russian champion Yuri Tsarenko. As we bring you inside of the Cardiff International Arena, where a capacity crowd of about 5,000 is expected, currently Great Britain has but three world champions, so each is a precious commodity, and one of those titleists will be center stage this evening. On top of that, he's a Welshman, but while Joe Calzaghe enjoys celebrity status locally, the world stage is another story. An impressive win tonight could change all that. It's fight night in Cardiff. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert ringside from Cardiff, Wales. Well, Sugar Ray Leonard once reigned at super middleweight, and so did Roy Jones. But in recent years, the 168-pound division has been dominated by foreign-born champs, none of whom have had worldwide respect or appeal. Now there's Joe Calzaghe. He's undoubtedly the best in Wales, arguably the best at 168. He may also be on the verge of superstardom, yet he's still in search of respect. Why? Well, for starters, he's never fought in the States, and he's never had that defining breakout fight. To break through, Calzaghe needs a major upgrade in quality of opposition. The dangerous Charles Brewer is a step up tonight, but Calzaghe's ultimate goal is a showdown with undisputed middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins, or the aforementioned Jones, now the world light heavyweight king. With that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champ Bobby Chaz. And Bobby, is Brewer Calzaghe's biggest test? Well, Steve, Calzaghe has beat the likes of Chris Eubank, Robin Reed, two former world champions, and Omar Sheikha, a top 10 challenger. So on paper, with eight losses, Brewer may not stack up to look as tough as those, as those men, but with his style, he may be just the opposite. He can box. He's got good reach. He can punch. The big question is his chin. He's been knocked out by fighters who don't appear to hit as hard as Joe Calzaghe. That's the big question. He's got a great trainer in Bobby Boogaloo Watts. If his chin holds up and he's in the zone, this could be a war. And yes, Calzaghe's toughest test to date. Will victory tonight help launch Calzaghe's career in the U.S.? I think it'll help give him some respect in the U.S., but not launch it. He needs to beat a household name. Once again, as long as Brewer has eight losses, they're expecting an undefeated champion to beat a man with eight losses. It's almost a given, even though it's not. He needs to beat a name to become a name. It's that simple. Well, both have predicted knockouts, so we should have fireworks tonight. Joe Calzaghe isn't a household name in the States, but here in Wales, he's a national hero. The Southpaw does have punching power, and it's clear that if he knocks off some name fighters, Calzaghe just might reach his star potential on both sides of the Atlantic. I've worked all my life, been boxing for 20 years, 21 years. It's a long time. I've only been recognized, obviously, as world champion four and a half years. But all that work I've done, you know, all that sacrifice as a child, I'm reaping the rewards now. Now when I walk on the street, obviously I'm recognized. Everybody in Wales is proud of my achievements. 
Everyone comes up the street and say you're doing Wales proud, you know, and that makes me feel good. And to put a smile on a, you know, somebody's face, you know, it's really good that I'm in that position, that I can do that. Oh my God, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have said, you know, you should go to training camp and what else. But I do all my work at home, you know, because it's a great countryside, you have great hills to run. You know, I bring the sparring partners in, and uh, it's where I'm happy, you know, it's where I'm content. You know, I, I get a bit edgy the week of the fight. I think everybody stays a little bit away from me. You know, even my dad, who's a trainer, you know. Sort of, if I've got sort of somebody to have a go at, we'll have a go at them. We'll go at each other. But, you know, you know I love my dad. He's, he's a great guy. And, uh, you know, you've been with me from the start. And, you know, I owe everything to him, really. What I've achieved. Joe Calzaghi! I think I was two or three years too late in Britain, you had the great fighters like Nigel Benn, Steve Collins, Chris Eubank, all making millions fighting each other. And uh, when I came along, obviously I beat Chris Eubank, but that's at the end of his career. And uh, at the end of the day, there was no big names left, left in Britain, or basically anyway. So I've gone dominated the, the division for four and a half years. I've been, you know, I've lacked the sort of a defiant super fight, you know, which I, which I, which I need, really. I think I need a really, you know, a top 10 pound for pound fighter to really show, you know, what I can do. You know, so you just gotta keep plugging away, it's hard work, but I get there eventually. Joe Calzaghe, an attractive fighter on a lot of levels at the age of 30. He's ready to launch himself. The question is, is he made of the right stuff? Charles Brewer doesn't think so, calling him Joe Coward Zaggy, a reference to his so-called lack of quality opposition. Nevertheless, Calzaghe says Brewer will succumb to his power, boxing skills, and the intimidating atmosphere. We'll see if the war of words spills into the ring tonight in our main event. Let's get to our first bout. The Rocket Man, undefeated Gary Lockett, makes his ring debut in his native Wales against Yuri Serenko for the WBO Intercontinental 154 pound title, light middleweight, as it's called here in the United Kingdom. The challenger and Russian champ Yuri Serenko, who's not actually Russian, being from neighboring Belarus, but he spent most of his career across the border in Russia. Biggest win, outpointing vastly experienced Andrei Pestraev, the former European champ and title challenger. Keeps very busy. He fought just 10 days ago, a fifth round stoppage. Bobby, only 22 years of age, but he's more experienced than Lockett, but probably overmatched skill wise. You know, experience is excellent, Steve, but you know what? Without the skills of Gwyn, it could be meaningless. Lockett appears to be the better boxer, the better puncher, and endurance wise, seems to have better conditioning. So this could be a really long night for Serenko. Boxing in the former Soviet Union is a hard school. No concept of building fighters up. They throw them right in with tough opponents. So Serenko's 12 6 and 1 record may be a little misleading. Here's Gary Lockett. The locals are raving about this Welsh prospect. Comes off his biggest win, a fourth round KO over slick Australian veteran Kevin Bones Kelly. You see the crowd reaction. They love the Rocket here. Boy, he just unleashed a barrage on Kelly that began with a right and ended with his most damaging punch, the left hook. That's the Lockett Rocket. The up and coming Lockett is 16 and 0, 13 knockouts. His last win earned him the belt he's defending tonight. What do you think? Are the kudos for Lockett justified, Bobby? You know, most of the kudos are reasonably well deserved, Steve, but it's so early in his career. He's never been past six rounds, but he has great power in excellent addition. But again, never past six rounds. He needs to step up his quality of opposition, and within about a year, he'll be knocking on somebody's door looking for a world title. It's only his second scheduled 12-round fight, but he averages just two and a half rounds per fight. Here in the UK, they'd love to see him fight local contenders Wayne Alexander or Takalu, but he's talking like Daniel Santos and Winky Wright. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. At 25, Lockett is three years older than Serenko. Three and a half inch height advantage for the 5'10 Lockett. The reach nearly even, both right at the 154 limit at yesterday's weigh-in. And the key rules for this fringe title affair. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. 
If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fighters ruled a technical draw. If it happens after the end of round four, they'll go to the scorecards. So here at the Cardiff International Arena, we're getting ready for Gary Lockett versus Yuri Serenko, junior middleweights. We are set for the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the International Arena here in Cardiff, Wales, as we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Showtime and Red Square. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. The supervisor at ringside is Charles Giles, along with the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Brian Remy. Introducing to you our physicians at ringside, Dr. Ray Monsell, Dr. Jim Naismith, and Mr. Peter Fitzgerald, and our timekeeper at the bell, Neil Berder. Introducing our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, we have from Rouen, France, Robin Dolpierre. From Pontypool, Wales, Roddy Evans. And from London, England, Roy Francis. And our third man of the ring is from Wolverhampton, England. Introducing John Coyle. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Championship. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white and red trim, hailing from Minsk, Belarus. He weighed in at 11 stone even, or 154 US pounds. His record stands at 12 wins, six losses, one draw with nine wins coming by way of knockout. He is the Russian light middleweight champion tonight, challenging for the intercontinental title. Introducing Yuri Sarenko. And his opponent across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, is the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks with blue trim, hailing and representing Cumbran, Wales. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 11 stone even, or 154 US pounds, undefeated in his campaign in the ring, with 16 wins, no losses, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion, Gary the Rocket Lockett. Once again, a referee in charge, John Coyle. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing schedule. Gary, come on. Okay, I've spoken to you both in the dressing room. Obey the rules, obey my instructions, and let's see good sportsmanship, okay? Good luck. Gary Lockett making his hometown debut, one of the top young European fighters in the talent rich junior middleweight ranks. He is a power puncher, good left hook. 13 of his 16 wins by knockout, three in the first 11. Within two, Sarenko, the reigning Russian junior middleweight champ, little tough guy, sort of a straight in and back type fighter, more of a, a slugger brawler. You won't see much lateral movement. Throws a decent punch, and he's a he's a little tricky. He said he'll look to uh, feel out Lockett in the first round. Lockett, uh, from what we've seen, uh, Bobby has pretty good style, educated jab. He's got a pretty good jab, pretty stiff jab too. He can literally bang with both hands. Sometimes there's a little too straight up and down. It doesn't move side to side, but he is working on it, he says. He's very patient, not reckless, doesn't make too many mistakes, intelligent. Will try to draw opponents onto his countering shots, which is particularly the left hook. Economical with his punches. Missed with that wild left. There's a quiet confidence about Lockett wearing the, the light silver trunks with the blue trim. Very respectful, won't badmouth anyone. He's definitely not a trash talker, but he comes to fight. He looks like he has world-class power from the tapes that I've seen, but still learning and gaining experience. There was a nice lead right hand followed by a left hook that was blocked, but the right hand landed very clean. Sarenko took it without much of a problem. Sarenko may not have the best defense. He's vulnerable to speedy boxer types that move around a lot, but he's very durable. 
He also has a great left hook to the body. So much land there and a nice overhand right. He likes to target the liver, as he put it. And he's tough to get rid of. He's never been stopped all six losses going the distance. But I'll tell you, Bobby, he's up against it tonight against the promising Welshman here in his own backyard. He sure is. Lockett has good skills, good tools. And there is a rumor that Cherenko tires a bit in the mid-rounds. I saw some tapes on him. Didn't look as active in the mid-rounds. And one of the long, strong suits for Lockett is that he doesn't get tired. Yes, yeah, we approach the final minute of round one. Serenko does seem to get winded in the middle rounds as uh, Serenko goes after the body of Lockett. But I've seen Serenko have that happen to him. Then he recovers and gets a second win and wins the fight. He knows the tricks. There's that left hook, but it was blocked. The crowd will make noise every time the Rocket Man comes close. Like there. Lockett dictating the tempo. Stepping in. Throwing first. And a straight right hand sends Serenko back a bit. So early in the round, Serenko is pushing Lockett backward, more effective for Serenko. Now that he's being backed up, Lockett's being much more effective. Beautiful combination to the head by Lockett. A straight right followed by a left hook. And he scored with those. Frank, step back, boss. Frank. As we head for the bell, round one. One of the books. And we are set for our keys to victory, courtesy of Bobby Chen. We'll start with Gary Lockett. Combinations off the jab. The jab will not only get his range down for him, but it'll bother Serenko on the way in. Also, sharp counter punching. The shorter Serenko's going to try and push him back, he needs to block him, bang him back and also land his power shots. This will take its toll on the shorter Russian fighter. For Yuri Serenko, he needs to push Lockett back the way he did there in the first part of the round. Lockett doesn't fight as well going backward. Also, outwork Lockett. Every once in a while, Lockett is a little too conservative with his punch output. And lastly, left hook to the body. Again, he used that in the first round very well. This will slow down Lockett. Don't do no rushing your boxing smart, you know what I mean? You only hit you once. Here, Miguel, stand up, suck in, enjoy it, Gal, off the jab and combos. Colin Moorcroft in the corner of Gary Lockett, who told us he really needs to guard against over-anxiousness, fighting for the first time in front of his hometown fans. Lockett, who lives just about 10 minutes from Joe Calzaghe, and Calzaghe will probably have to deal with the same uh, situation when he fights Brewer later, but Lockett needs to be patient. Remember to jab and counterpunch. We know in the first, there's a nice left hook by Lockett leaping in with it. In the first round, Lockett missed a lot more punches than I think he had intended to. And Schrenkel outworked him just a little bit. Lockett made the round close, but I thought Schrenkel just eked it out. The anxious uh, part may be over for Gary Lockett, and he looks like he wants to get down to business here in round two. He's come out very purposeful behind that jab and the left hook using the right hand as well. Everything's much more on target. As Schrenkel digs to the body with his left hook, Little blood around the nose of Lockett, right nostril. This fight, very last minute for Serenko. As mentioned, he fought just 10 days ago, but that's nothing new to him. He had 10 fights in 2001, went six and four, and on a couple of occasions he fought. Fights very close, one eight days apart. Lockett just walked into a jab. But this guy stays busy. When you fight four and six round fights, you know, it's much easier to do that. When you get to 10, 12 round tough fights, the attrition it takes on your body, the toll it takes, you can't do that. Well, this is scheduled for 12. It's for something called the WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight title. A little more blood flowing from the nose and even a little bit of spit out of the mouth of Gary Lockett. But Lockett keeps pressing forward. A little bobbing and waving. And I'll tell you what, there's a little tiny hesitation that Serenko does, and, and every single time Lockett fights, and gets hit with that lead right hand. As Lockett turns it up. A little more movement that we've seen from Serenko in tapes. 
trying to stay away from the uh, much talked about left hook of Lockett. Lockett again spitting out blood. His face is getting blood here by the moment. Sarenko uses head and shoulder face to draw fire like that. Good right hand by Sarenko. He draws the fire of Lockett and hits him with that lead right hand. And it's worked right. maybe Step half back, a dozen times now in the first two rounds. I mean, that was right on Lockett's chin, but Lockett showing a pretty good beard. Yeah, that was a clean punch. Very clean. A better round for Sarenko. Little one here, Tim. All right. Just hanging your head out a little bit long, Gal. Do you hear me? Let's go a little bit snappy with the shots. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. You're doing well. It's a 12 round fight, it's not a sprint. Do you hear me, Gal? Watch the nose get bloodied. Sharenko's been hitting him with nice right hands. He stuffs the jab there. They're landing on that nose. And he's been shoulder fanning him and hitting him with the right hand. You'll watch it right now. He slips the shot in. He stuffs the jab in. Little 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 hesitation. There's the right hand right on the jaw. Slash nose area. Blood, see it's battered all over the face of Gary Lockett. Double jab cross. Get close. Don't blow your nose. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Come on, Joe. Go off the jab and you've come off it, Gary. Yep. Don't rush the jab. This is where the cut man earns his money. Daddy Mancini in the corner of Gary Lockett. Lockett in phenomenal condition. He runs the beaches, runs 10 to 12 miles on weekends. So we'll see if that has to factor in if this fight goes deeper. Round three of 12. Serenko coming off a good round in round two. Landed a couple of good right hands on the head of Lockett. Yeah, early in the round, Lockett came out, established himself, but Shrenko caught him with those right-hand counters time and time again. Shrenko looking very confident. He's in the black and white trunks from Minsk, Belarus. Right uppercut just missed by Lockett. Left hook attempt there by Serenko to the body. Lockett avoiding the body completely right now. Not really working the body. And there's a good left hook to the body as I say that. Right on cue. Serenko missing with a right cross. Stop boxing! Stop boxing! John Coyle, the third man of the ring. There's the left hook digging to the body by Lockett. Two in a row. And Serenko holding on. Lockett starting to score more now regularly. Trying to slow Serenko down. And he backs Serenko into the ropes and lets fly. Not a lot of landing there really effectively. A lot of it just hitting off gloves. Better show than go. No blood from Lockett's nose, as in round two. Less than a minute remaining in the third. A lot more holding and clinching, mostly by Serenko. Serenko knows all the tricks. He'll do anything he can, like use shoulders, elbow, he'll throw anything. Right hand over the top, raising blow by Lockett, and those punches did to connect as well. Well, you know what? Lockett's loading up a little more now, and that's telegraphing some of the shots, but his punches are getting harder. That left landed right on the neck by Lockett. And he's trying to push Serenko off. Serenko just hanging on. Here's the shoulder by Serenko. Tell you what, Lockett's using a little bit of forearm on the inside himself, trying to push Serenko off and hit him. Yeah, it's getting a little dirty right now off the roughhouse tactics by Serenko as we head for the bell. Stop boxing! Okay. Later tonight, our main event, Joe Calzaghe versus Charles Brewer at the weigh-in yesterday afternoon. A little controversy. Calzaghe Joe made Calzaghe, the weight. 11 stone. 13 and three quarter pounds. Just under the 168 pound super middleweight limit, but for Charles Brewer, a different story. At first, 
He was a pound and three quarters over. Some anxious moments. Then about an hour later after a, a sauna he climbed back on the scale. And you can tell by the applause he made it with a little despair. Turned out he was the same exact weight as Calzaghe, 167 and three quarters. So fight on. Too long once you get in that short, Gal, but that's where the success is coming from, short shots. Keep Come on, Gal. Keep concentrating. Left hand first. Now we enter round number four. Incidentally, Brewer insists he's not dehydrated or weak and is ready to fight. That should be a, a dandy. This is scheduled for 12 WBO Intercontinental Junior or Light Middleweight Championship. Gary Lockett, the hometown guy, is in the white trunks with the blue trim. Yuri Serenko in the multicolored trunks, black, white, and red from Belarus. He's the Russian champ. And he's looked a little better than we anticipated. Serenko. Lockett's letting a punch. Beautiful left hook to the body there by Serenko. He's measuring Lockett right now, and Lockett's not offering up much in the way of offense. Yeah, Lockett just in a defensive pose, and he says, come on back. Sort of right. inviting come him out. in, playing come possum. Out. But he's got to throw some punches himself. He says, all right, give me some more. Missing wildly is Lockett. He's loading up with those shots, Steve, and you know what? Fighters can notice the tension in your shoulders when you load up. You pull back just a little bit, that extra second will make you miss that punch. Lockett may be very eager, perhaps too eager, to put on a, an impressive showing here in front of his hometown fans. As mentioned, it's his home debut. He just needs to settle down a little and get into his game. He needs to work in behind the jab again the way it was before. Beginning of the last round in the first round, working in behind the jab, stopping it, getting his range, and then loading the combinations behind it. He also wants to prove that he can handle people with a right hand as well. He, he says, don't make so much out of my left hook. He missed with those three shots, Lockett. And Serenko smiles at him. And blood appears again on the right side of Lockett's face. I believe again from the nose. As Lockett brushes the blood aside from the nostril. Lockett who broke his right shoulder when he was 12 and his left side became dramatically stronger. Which may be part of the reason he has such a, a powerful left hook. But I think the crowd would like to see more of it. Serenko, no. There's a left hook, but it wasn't a solid punch. Serenko's making Lockett miss a lot more than Lockett's used to missing, and you miss, you get tired. And Lockett could be getting frustrated. As Serenko goes to the body, it connects with a, a Stop right boxing. Okay, to the sort, it sort it out. Box. Serenko has to be pleased thus far. As we right. come to the Step end back. of come round out. four. Come out both. Another wild miss by Gary Lockett at the bell. Gary Lockett here was back to the ropes. What happens is Shrinko just keeps the jab here, keeps tapping, tapping, tapping. Then he fires the right hand. He comes in with the left hook to the body. And he fires everything up inside. And there's nothing that Lockett can do about it. Just keeping it at bay, keeping his back up against the ropes, using that as a range finder. There's the uppercut, there's a left hook up top, right hand, left hook to the body. Working him nicely, clearly winning that combination. Now watch the big load up shots by Lockett that miss. That one grazed, that one missed completely, the one before it missed completely. And here you see Sharenko smiling at him. He's not hitting him with those big shots he's loading up. Get that round here. Get it paid, Serenko's second fight in the UK. He fought in Sheffield. He met Southpaw Ryan Rhodes last year, losing a six round decision, trying to even the score in the UK tonight. Looking for the upset. He's fought mainly in Russia and the Ukraine from the industrial city of Vitebsk in Belarus. Round five scheduled for 
Uh, 12 WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Crown at stake. Owned by Gary Lockett right now. Coming off the impressive victory over Kevin Kelly. Kelly has been stopped in 38 their pro fights. The, the veteran. There was nice counter punches by both men, but Lockett landing the cleaner of the counters. The veteran from Australia and Lockett stopped him. But he's not looking uh, that impressive here in his first defense. Nose starting to bleed again by Gary Lockett. That's got to be disconcerting. And a good left hand to the head by Lockett. Maybe his best punch of the night. And he took Zoink with that a little bit. You can see a little bit of his leg, just a little wobble. Lockett's a very good finisher, but that time, Zarenko able to extricate himself from danger. Well, one of the reasons why Lockett gets hit so flush by Zarenko is he doesn't move his head as much, and Zarenko conversely does move. He's had a lot more taking away from some of those blows. Lockett trying to end this thing on one punch is, as you mentioned earlier, really loading up. And hard body shots by Zarenko. Right on the belt. And a good left jab by Serenko. Lockett missing with the right draw. Break! No shots, no shots, come out. John Coyle, who repped the Mike Tyson Lou Savarese fight, Glasgow, Scotland, third man. You see the extra hesitation in some of Lockett's punches. He's loading up just, just trying to get that little extra oomph on the punch, and it's costing him to land. He doesn't land because Zarenko can see it. Blood continues from the nose of Lockett. Break! Okay, let go, guys. Lockett trying a little tricky head out. movement there, but he did not uh, okay, succeed box. as he continues to spit blood out onto the canvas. Good little left uppercut underneath by Serenko. Lockett comes back firing, but missing with most of that. The blood worsens on the face of Lockett here on the fifth. Every once in a while you get a cut, Steve, that just won't stop bleeding, even on the inside. It looks like it's becoming very annoying. Stop boxing! Stop it out. could be okay. a distraction for Lockett. We'll take you into Serenko's corner. Our translator is Olga Lewis. Thank you, sir. Drag him. Make him feel it. Don't let him go get in the center. Lockett working in behind the jab with the right hand, missing, but throwing big wild shots. The air grazing shot just can't get the range just yet. Big punch once again, loading up with him. He's missing, but making the effort. As we hit round six, scheduled for 12 for the WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Championship. 154 pounders. This is a division that houses Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas, Winky Wright, Daniel Santos. Those are the champions. De La Hoya is set to uh, finally meet Vargas in September. Wright meets uh, Bronco McCart for a third time in July. He's already beaten him twice. Santos, the division's newest champion, could beat England's Wayne Alexander in his first uh, title defense. So that's the division these guys are in, and someday Lockett would like to be up there challenging for one of those titles. Right now he's got his work cut out for oh, yeah. Serenko right in front of him. A fighter whose record maybe doesn't indicate just how much he has. You mentioned that earlier, Bobby. You heard me say that he's 12-6 and 1, but it may be misleading because of the fact that in the old Soviet Union, now Russia, they don't care who they put you in when they start you out. In the first fight, there's been times over the years that Fighters walk right in eight and ten round fights, and sometimes that's not indic excuse me, indicative of how they can fight with a little experience. Lockett has been passed four rounds only once in his career. A decision victory in London. 
back in May of 2001. And he's never been past six rounds in his uh, 16 fight career. 16 and 0, 13 knockouts. He's played pretty close to being past six rounds in a few short minutes. Beautiful right hand, and now a combination to the head. Another follow-up combination, too, after that, because Lockett eventually countered him, but Shrenko seemed not wasting the energy, being much more economical than Lockett, who has a reputation for being economical. Don't tell me yet, but I'm curious to hear about your scorecard when we hit the halfway point. Fair enough. Keep me in suspense. <laughs> Break! No shops, no shops, both. Come out. Less than 40 seconds, round six. The blood from the Foul. nose of Lockett continues. And Lockett's face looks really battered and bruised, doesn't it? The right eye is beginning to uh, close a little bit. He landed a nice right hand here, but missed the two follow-up shots. Once again, I think Sorrento's just got the timing and the rhythm to slip Lockett's punches. Sorrento very active. And again, Lockett loading up with the right and the left and missing with both. And it takes... Break. Okay, For every no shots. action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It stop takes energy it. to stop those punches. He really telegraphed those shots. While Joe Calzaghe is regarded by many as the top super middleweight in the world, I'll tell you what, he doesn't impress Charles Brewer, the hatchet who shows no respect for the Welshman. I find it very difficult to give this guy any compliments in terms of his level opposition, his experience, his punch and power, his skills. For every guy that he knocked out with five punches, I'll knock him out with two punches. It's hard for me really to compliment this guy. As a fighter, I don't believe that we're nowhere near on the same level. Brewer feels Calzaghe is nowhere near the same level. That was some hatchet job by the hatchet. Yes, it was. Steve. You knew I couldn't resist that. But it was apropos. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah. Come on, Gal. Lockett going past six for only the second time in his career. Round seven, Bobby Chez, your unofficial card. You know what? I have it three to three. I think Sorrento's outworked him in a few rounds. He made him miss so many punches in some of those rounds that even though Lockett appeared to be the effective aggressor, he's working, he's not landing. Got to be effective. Keyword effective. All right, we'll see what happens from this point on. The second half of the fight officially underway. Now let's see if uh, Lockett has more success. He had a tough go at it here in his home debut in Wales. Born in Pontypool, Wales, makes his home in Quimbran. C W M B R A N. You know, the rap many times on big punches is that as the fight gets longer, they get less and less effective because they fatigue and tire and they need that power so badly. And this only six round fight the lock has been in, it was a decision. Now we're past six. It'll be interesting to see how his power holds up in the later rounds. And this is a guy, uh, Bobby, who averages just two and a half rounds of fight, Gary Lockett. See there, the big load up and the big miss. That's costly in the energy department. Lately here on Showtime, we've seen many occasions where experience became a big factor. Could be the factor here tonight as well. No, especially if it gets late because he, you know, Lockett has no experience going past six rounds, and at least Sharenko has some. No knockdowns thus far. Lockett's been down just once. He thought it was uh, a faulty call, though. He more of an off-balance shot, but it was officially called a knockdown. And Serenko has been down only once in his career, but none of his six losses by knockout. He was down against Ryan Rhodes in Sheffield last time he was here in the United Kingdom. A fight he lost. Serenko working that body again. For a right hand up top and left hand underneath. Lockett looking less and less effective. But... Sorenko, you remember you mentioned earlier he looks like he gets winded midway, but he looks winded, but he may have been playing possum. I was just going to say, Steve, I think he was just playing possum because he just teed off. Stop boxing! Stop boxing! He kind of okay. doubled oh. over as if he was out of gas, and then all of a sudden he just let fly with a couple of shots that connected. And I think he surprised Lockett. 
He is tricky. At 22 stop years boxing, of stop age. Stop boxing. Take care of the head, son. Box. Fighter. Yuri Sarenko in the black, white, and red. And again, the busier of the two is Sarenko. A welt around the right eye of Lockett, the champion, a bloody nose. He sure looks like the loser to this point. You know, sometimes Lockett actually works Stop more, boxing. but lands less. So he may be busier, but not more effective. Olga Lewis, our translator. Good, Dan. Well done. Go. 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 It's going out. Go. Go. No one. It's going out. No, nothing. It's not coming off. Nothing. It was coming out. Uh, look at it. Попробуй начать, если хочешь с правой головы начать, попробуй начать правой по пузу, а потом левой боковой голову, ясно? Try from the head, try from the head, first try from the stomach, and then go for the head. В голову тебя, ты под эту руку шагом бей и все, достанешь, попробуй. Да. You watch here, as as Shrink was coming in this way, he there's a little fire here, but then he loads up, he pulls back with his shoulder, and he fires this left hook clear over his head. His right hand clear over his head. There's just one shot. There you just you see it. He pulled back his shoulder and loads it up, and it's not going to land. Shrink was too quick for that. Well, we've gotten a report that Lockett's thrown one and a half times as many punches as Serenko, but he hasn't landed as many. Serenko's landing more. He's given off Lockett a lot of effort, but he's not getting as much done. There was a nice one, too. Yeah, Lockett coming on here suddenly. Round eight, scheduled for 12 for a marginal title at 154. Once again, missing quite a bit of the punches that he throws. Shrank will be more economical, and down the stretch, that's going to be key. Well, he's getting back to the basics now, Lockett. He's jabbing and making Serenko miss, but he didn't make him pay. Now the jab working, the shotgun jab just being stuffed in by Serenko, but he didn't follow it up with a right. Here's the jab again. That time a right hand. This guy's awkward, Serenko, and he's frustrating the champion. Well, what he's doing is he's giving him a moving target, which is harder to hit. Stop boxing! And Stop boxing! Quite okay, honestly, Lockett's go. loading go. up, which gives him that extra Box. split second to get out of harm's way, and he does. See, when Lockett works in behind the jab, double jab, he's not only getting points, but he's lining this guy up. He's finding the range. He's got a range finder out there so he can measure with him. He said he wanted to do more of that in our meeting with him yesterday, and he really has to continue to do just that. Nice right uppercut on the inside. That sent Lockett's head back. Left hook to the jaw by uh, Serenko. See on the way once again, Lockett's punching, but they're missing and he's getting caught. There he gets counter blood spatters all over his face. Nice body shot by Serenko, making Lockett miss and making him pay. Serenko's experience paying off. for 102 rounds coming in. So Lockett only 41. Now he established the jab there. Had oh, Shrankle's head up. Huh? Yeah, had Shrankle's head up. He should have took it over the right hand, but he didn't. Pardon me, Bobby. I just noticed Shrankle switched to southpaw just momentarily. Didn't get much done there with it. And now a shoulder movement by Lockett, giving Shrankle a little taste of his own medicine. Nice stiff jab. He's got to follow it up. And now Lockett switched to southpaw yeah. briefly. Lockett with a, a welt under his right eye, a bloody nose, and Serenko pretty clean face. And this is not Lockett's fight, moving, Stop moving, going backward, but he was being fairly effective. Flip. Let's push that round. See him nicking the rounds there without taking. He got a nice body shot in then. That was good boxing, son. That was good boxing. That was good boxing. Oh, ho. It's all about this and not being in this game, gal, isn't it? Yeah. Hey.
There's a nice exchange of combinations. Firing at each other. There's a nice right hand, one, two, right down the middle by Sarenko. And here comes Lockett right back, but he stops. When he has Sarenko moving back like that, he has to follow through. Step in with him and follow through. Nice, nice up. Good Amy. Yeah. Nice and sharp. Oh, sharp with your combos too. And stop reaching. If he's not there, the shot. They let him come onto them. Here we go. Hey, yeah. off the jab and it all comes off. It be smart, go. Hands up, come on, on now, Ryan. The jab. Lockett getting an earful as we enter round nine. This Welsh crowd has not really been into this fight simply because Lockett really hasn't given him, given them much to cheer about. In his corner, you heard him say, come and work off the jab. When, when the jab's working, you're working. But Sarenko closing the range and smothering him. See, this is generally not Lockett's fight. Power punchers don't fight as well going backwards generally. He's been boxing fairly well from the outside, but this is not his fight. And one of those shots opened up the bleeding again from the nose of Lockett. There's the jab by Lockett. Lockett's left eye is also getting really purple and ugly, swollen, starting to semi close. Lockett just keeps inviting Sarego in, and I'm not sure that's a very uh, wise idea. Sarenko says okay and then he goes to the body. We're in the rounds now where fatigue will start to be a factor. 9, 10, 11 and 12. And this right. is where go. perhaps go, Lockett both. has the upper hand because as mentioned earlier he's in fantastic condition. He does a lot of running. He told me he's never run a marathon but he's come close. He runs uh, 10 to 12 miles on the weekends. So he should be in great shape. The flip side of that coin is he's never been this far and the other fighter has there he could be right. on the downside. Because right now he's not faring well. And I think experience has something to do with it. Sarenko's gone 12 once. That's when he beat Andre Pestroia, who once uh, challenged for a WBA world title. And being a former fighter, I know when you hit those milestones, your first 10 and 12 rounder, it gives you a certain amount of natural innate confidence for the next time out. Pestroia also once went the distance with a fellow named Pernell Whitaker. Blood coming down the back of Sarenko, but it's from the face of Lockett. That blood is flying all over the place. Lockett continues to miss. Sarenko keeping Lockett at bay with the jab. And Lockett coming forward. And in a small ring, it favors the guy coming forward. Lockett with a body shot getting a roar from the crowd. This is a very small ring, 18 feet. Generally considered a puncher's room when they're small like that. Boy, that shiner getting worse and worse under the right eye of Lockett. Lockett see there starting to work the jab nice with being effective, but not working his combinations off that jab. Slipped some punches, but then didn't make Sarenko pay. Joe Calzaghe up next with Charles Brewer. While Charles Brewer doesn't have many kind words for his opponent tonight, Joe Calzaghe offered this assessment of the Philadelphian. Yeah, well, Charles Brewer's a good fighter. He's a, dang he's a dangerous fighter. Um, I know I have to be at my best and be alert. He's a big, big puncher and he has fast hands. The main key is I can take a great shot. That's the difference, you know, the chin is that I know when I land, he's going to be in deep trouble. I'm training very, very hard for this fight. It's probably going to be the toughest fights in my career. So, you know, as long as I perform at my best, I'm going to win. Simple as that. The respectful Joe Calzaghe showing respect for his opponent in stark contrast to Brewer's analysis of Joe. Now come on, guys. Round Show 10, you're three your to heart. go. That's it. Come in here now. Do it in here now, Gary. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, this is the digging. Go. Now let's see how hard you are. Now, girls, come on. Hey, 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 hey. The pep talk in the corner of Gary Lockett as they show a sense of urgency heading in around 10. It's getting louder and louder, and that wealth under the right eye of Lockett is getting worse and worse. You know that confidence I talked about when you reach the milestones of going 10 and going 12 in long hard fights? Right now, Lockett's brain. 
could be on overload. He'd be worried about those next two rounds, the next three rounds. It could be affecting his performance. I'm sure he's in shape after all the work he's told us he's done, but mentally it's just as big a game sometimes as it is physically. Lockett's title, albeit a French title, and undefeated record are on the line. 16-0 with 13 knockouts, and perhaps the pressure of trying to perform well in front of your hometown crowd also a factor. It's the first time Lockett's ever been in this position. Southpaw again for Sharenko briefly. Ever so quickly and back to Orthodox. And Lockett on the retreat. And the output gone down significantly for Lockett now. And now Sharenko with Lockett on the ropes. Which is not where Lockett wants to be, and he's pounding away to the body, Sarenko. Some nice body work there by Sarenko, and I think that Lockett is he's hit a little bit of a wall. I'm not sure if it's physical or mental or a combination of both, but he's hit a little bit of a wall. The output in his punches isn't there. The look in his eyes has changed. saw Francisco Panchito Mahano, a rising young undefeated star, lose recently on Showtime to a, a relative unknown. Could we have a similar outcome here? There's Lockett switching to Southpaw. He's, he's trying anything now. Now he goes back. Lockett continues to backpedal. He may have run out of gas. It's certainly a possibility, never having been this deep in a fight. We don't know what's left in the tank. We heard about his running, the miles he puts in, the work in the gym. But if you miss all those big shots early, it will take its toll on you in the fatigue department. Well, I'm not sure if Lockett has what David Tua has. We saw that last week. Tua was behind the entire fight. And then out of nowhere in the ninth, he can change it in a hurry, can't he? We saw it against Prezzo Kendo. Right! Tua no has shots. the vaunted left hook. Lockett has a very good left hook, certainly not in the category of the more experienced Tua. But we'll see if the left hook will save Lockett. You're at Юра, два раунда. Юра, two rounds. Понаглее с ним. Собрание, но понаглее Don't бить. Понял him. меня? You should be collective, but, but yeah. beat him. Beat him up. Подожди, я понял. Ломай его канатом. Exact. Пробил, на волне отработай. Назад и опять пробей. Или пробил, уклонись, опять пробей. Пробил на мне, опять пробей. Ты понял меня? Do you understand Волну me? Волну сделай. Два раунда осталось. Two rounds are left. And then you will be champion. Just two rounds left. Ну, срок на руки, ясно? Ошибок не делай. You'll stop on leaning on these ropes. Jeremy, you don't get caught with the body shot if you're using your legs. Jeremy. Gary, show your fucking heart. Let him know Gary Luffy yeah. fucking is. Do you hear me? Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying yeah. to you? Six okay. minutes to go. Come on, come on, son. Come on. Come on, Gary Luffy. Yeah. Come on, Gary Luffy. You're on top now. You're right on top. Ten Ten ping, ping. Okay, seconds, thank you. Okay. Jeremy, let's be the governor now. Gary yeah. Luffy, the governor. Come on, Gary. Colin Markroft with the Newt Rockney speech. A colorful version of that. They are very, very worried in that corner. Well, that was obvious. Is, this fight is very close, and I actually have it dead even after 10. These two rounds, the championship rounds, will make the difference. And you heard to our interpreter Olga Lewis in the Serenko corner that all they were saying was two more rounds, two more rounds, and you're the champion. Some dramatic stuff going on in both corners. We're in Cardiff, Wales. The supporting fight to Calzaghe Brewer. And a lot of people are surprised that this fight has gone this deep, particularly the Gary Lockett fans. Lockett making his hometown debut, coming in as the WBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight. Champ 16 0, 13 knockouts, rated number five by the WBO, and having his problems with Serenko. And right now, Serenko's teeing off on him, making him miss and putting the pressure on the corner. There have been no knockdowns. Nobody's really been in trouble, but Serenko has looked better than expected. And Lockett not as good as expected. The crowd trying to urge Lockett on. But he just doesn't seem to have that extra 
energy. Lock it back to the jab. Seems to have forgotten the much ballyhooed left hook. Now he's just worried about putting any number of punches out there, hard, soft, lefts, rights. He just wants to score and win the round at any cost. And you wonder what's going on in the mind of Serenko, just landed with a right, sort of a slapping right. Because, you know, it's so hard to take a championship away, especially in the other guy's hometown. Just don't know what's going on with the judges. That's always a fact the champions tend to get all the close rounds, especially in their hometown. The crowd sways the judges. It's very possible. Blood streaking out of the nose of Lockett, who's getting belted around by, by Sorenko. All three judges are European from France, Wales, and England. Sorenko continues to dictate, looking extremely confident. Lockett continues to go back. Not where he wants to be again. Sorenko with a right hand of the head, another right. He's making Lockett miss on a regular basis and then land. That defense in Sorenko is, is what we call ring generalship. It's part of it. Stop boxing! Well, it appears as if Sorenko may be in the lead. You're a boy. You're a boy. He's uh, yours. You're not all that. You're not that. Rookie, you're not that. Don't lose. 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 Do you understand? Don't lose. 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 Right, Gal, you've got to make sure you don't get a pop on this eye now. It's a bit of swelling on it. Do you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you winning? Well, yeah, you're winning. Let's make this but round you, big, though. You need this round. Let's you win this round, round, and we're going to win it big. Sure. But don't take the risk, Gal. Gary. Come on, Gary, lovely. Hey, hands up, Gary. Let's take it to him, Gary. Hands up. Hands hold on. Come on. Take Gary, this last Gary, round. Gary, Gary, Gary. Come on, Gary. Hey, Up hey, you get. Hey, Go hey. get him, Gary. to win the fight. I think if he wins the round, he gets a draw, and if he gets a knockdown, he wins it by two, he wins the fight. I have him behind, six rounds to five. Oh. And I'll tell you what, I noticed no end swell on that eye. Yep. He's just using Vaseline, no ice. The That's cut man not outrageous. doing much about that welt, Bobby, and it just opened up. It just splattered with blood. And perhaps the best thing for the fighter, as long as the blood is coming under the eye and not into it. Look at this, Sarenko. Oh. Showing a good chin. Sarenko looking to finish Lockett off for the 12. But you're right, Lockett not only showing good chin, but good heart. There's no right. quitting Gary Lockett, okay, but he just out, doesn't let have out, what let it out. takes. I think left in his gas tank to get this rushing out or down. There's another right hand he walks into. And that is a viciously ugly welt under his right eye. It is bleeding profusely. He's got blood coming from the welt and the nose. It's everywhere. Locke is just looking for one punch here. He may have to do something dramatic. Some blood finally coming out of the nose of Sorenko, too. Sorenko looking winded. He's thrown a lot of punches. But Lockett's eaten more leather. Zarenko to the midsection again. Lockett's punches don't seem to have much behind them. He's guarding his body and he's guarding the eye. He's worried about increasing right. more than not going. And I don't know that he has enough energy to send that much out. And he just checked the blood on his glove. It is not a pretty sight. This could be desperation time for Lockett. Under a minute left, round 12. Because we just don't know what the judges have to say. Sure, Sorenko's by it. He right. feels back, that he's got back, this back. thing. He just has to stay on his feet. 
Lockett. The best combination for Lockett in the past three rounds. Nice three punches, all landed solidly with power. We hit the 30-second mark. Let's see how Lockett finishes. Get away. A bloody Gary Lockett. As we approach 15 seconds. Another left hook landed on that eye, and now a right hand to follow. Both fighters exhausted. Break! Let go, boys. As we head for the bell in the final round. Stop boxing! What do you think? Well, unofficially, I officially have it. <laughs> <laughs> get for Sharenko. Right. By two it's rounds, good seven to five. We'll see yeah. how the official ringside judges have it. 115, 113 on my part. Many of the fans yeah, on their right. feet applauding. But I'm sure they're wondering as well. Their applause are subdued. Very they're subdued. perfunctory at best. I think some of the applause for Sorenko as well. So now we will stand by for the official decision. Some highlights from that final round of action. Sharenko coming in on a regular basis, pressing the action late in the fight. Landing a lot with the jab on the inside, but coming over the top with nice right hands and left hooks. There the punches didn't land as cleanly, but not indicative of the round. The eye busted wide open under Gary Lockett's right eye. And Cherenko, there's a right hand. That's what was happening throughout the round. Leading in, looking tired, feigning, and taking Lockett. Look at that face. Lockett landed some good shots of his own toward the end, but far too little as far as I was concerned and far too late. A gallant effort, but I don't think a winning one. Gary Lockett threw more punches in the fight, but Yuri Cherenko landed more punches in the fight. And only the ones that land count. And it's now in the hands of Robin Del Pierre from France, Roddy Evans from Wales, and Roy Francis from England. I don't think there'll be that much negativity should they call this fight in favor of Yuri Tsarenko. I mean, these are pretty sophisticated fans, but I'm sure they're obviously pulling for this guy right here, Gary Lockett, who not only has a giant welt under one eye, a giant welt over the other eye, and his nose was bloodied for most of the fight. Of course, they're all pulling for Lockett, but it's so understandable if this guy, Tsarenko, pulls it out. So we're standing by to throw it over to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., who has the results from the three judges. Over to Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Roddy Evans scores about 115 to 113 in favor of Yuri Sarenko. Judge at ringside, Robin Dolpierre scores about 115 to 113 in favor of Gary Lockett. Judge at ringside, Roy Francis scores about 116 to 115 in favor of the winner and new champion, Yuri Sarenko. There you have it, Bobby, an upset. You had it right. And I thought it was a good call by the ringside judges. I think it was a very good call. And, you know, some of those really close rounds, remember, when you switch one winner by one point, it becomes a two-point swing in the margin and in the decision. So I don't have a real big problem, but I thought Sharenko clearly won the fight. Bobby has mentioned these are knowledgeable fans, and they applauded the man from Belarus. No booing at all. Not one bit of booing, and you know if they thought otherwise, they would have booed. Absolutely. It is an accepted decision, a split decision for Yuri Sarenko, who takes over and wins this fringe title. So an interesting first fight here in Cardiff. Sarenko comes into the backyard of Gary Lockett and pulls off the surprise. There he is, the Belarus native, beats the Welshman and captures the WBO Intercontinental 154-pound belt. Sarenko needed to win the last round, we understand, to win the title, and he did just that by a score of uh, 
10 8 1 1 score in the bottom. Interesting. So Sorenko improves to 13 6 and 1. Lockett suffers his first loss, falls to 16 and 1, and does so in front of his hometown fans. So an unlikely result, and remember, this was Sorenko's second fight in just 10 nights. Here are the official judges' scorecards. Del Pierre had Lockett ahead by two. Evans had Sorenko ahead by two. And Roy Francis, the former referee, had Sorenko winning by one. So Sorenko wins by split decision. Coming up next, our main event. It'll be local favorite Joe Calzaghe putting his WBO Super Middleweight title up for grabs against former world champion and number six rated Charles the Hatchet Brewer. Into the dressing room of the unbeaten champ Joe Calzaghe. It's been a slow, steady rise for the Southpaw. Can he take his career to a new level? Captured the belt over a faded champion Chris Eubank about five years ago. And among his nine title defenses, wins over former champ Robin Reed, plus Omar Sheikha and Richie Woodall, his buddy. The rap on Calzaghe, particularly from Brewer, yes, he's beaten some champions, but at the end of their careers. Brewer says tonight, reality will set in. We'll soon see. Before we get to Calzaghe Brewer, let's see what's on the horizon right here on Showtime. The torch has been passed and a new generation of fighters has emerged. Get the shots off right away. With the selfless dedication to the sport that their idols once had. You had the dream, now let's make it happen. Tough young scrappers eager to make their name and hungry to make their mark. Now watch them chase their dreams in the ring. When a pair of junior lightweight KO artists face off as the tough former champ Carlos Navarro takes on slugger Omar Adorno to see who's the last man standing on Showbox the New Generation. Saturday, April 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on Showtime. Showtime Championship Boxing presents the return of the Black Rhino. Clifford Etienne was an undefeated heavyweight phenom with stardom in his eyes until he was stopped in his tracks. Now, Etienne returns to prove that he can get to the top of the division. But his next opponent, the dangerous Terrence Lewis, wants to stop the Rhino from charging ahead. Etienne versus Lewis, it's two tough heavyweights headed for a showdown. Saturday, April 27th at 10 on Showtime, America's number one boxing network. Hope you can join us for all the upcoming action. Up next, from Cardiff, Wales, what the fans came to see. A fight that has the makings of an explosive affair. Undefeated Joe Calzaghe and Charles Brewer for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. Let's go backstage into the dressing room of Charles the Hatchet Brewer, tough Philadelphia fighter. When Brewer made his last appearance on Showtime, it was one of the most stirring nights any fighter has had on this network. By any and all standards, the Brewer-Antoine Eccles shootout was among 2001's fights of the year. Call it the Hagler Hearns of the super middleweight. Like that bombs away battle, Brewer versus Eccles was brief but memorable with a touch of controversy tossed in. It was a fight that I felt as though was going to be uh, a very action-packed fight, and it, it turned out just to be that. Uh, the second round when I came out, I said, okay, he's in position, now and I'm going to open up. I fired a one-two, bang, bang. It came off perfect. I didn't even think about it. I just threw it, bang, bang. And a right hand, and down goes Echoes. I saw that he was hurt. He was, he was shaking up, and I was just going at him with, Shots that I felt like I was going to take this guy out. And a left uppercut, a left hook, and down goes Echoes for the second time. And at the very end of the second round, I dropped him again. Oh, big left just before the bell. I'm saying, why won't this referee just stop the fight, you know? Had he stopped the fight, had he stepped in, waved the fight off, nobody in that arena, nobody in his corner would have complained. The third round, I came out like a bat out of hell. Um, completely oblivious to everything that he was able to hit me with. Forgot all about defense and just went at it. Eccles all over Brewer, but Eccles goes flying to the canvas. Uh, we got into a clinch. The referee comes in. He breaks us apart, and in the process, he throws Antoine Eccles on the canvas. One of the strangest things we've seen. When I review the tape, you know, I'm looking at myself, and I'm like, yo, what are you doing? I'm, I mean, I'm hollering at myself, like, slow down, slow down. And there it comes, over and right, boom. Oh, my goodness! A roundhouse right by Eccles and Brewer stumbling around. I fell back into the ropes, and he lunged forward with a left uppercut. Talk about a street fight. Brewer, it's being stopped! The referee turns around, 
without even looking at me and just waved the fight off. And I'm just sitting there stunned, like, what the hell just happened? It's one of those situations where it happened, and only because this, the position that I'm in right now, I can say the hell with it. I'm getting the opportunity to become a world champion again, and he isn't. Wow, that was some fight. Brewer echoes the kind of wicked battle the super middleweights hadn't seen since the days of Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. And go figure, it's the loser who gets the title shot here tonight. Back here with my partner, former world champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, how much of a factor is the hometown advantage here tonight? Well, Steve, the hometown advantage from the fight standpoint is not really a factor because it's not a field or a court where the players get to practice on it and know the lay of the land. However, the hometown crowd can be a huge factor, especially in close rounds. The judges tend to lean toward the local guy, and the crowd can sway the judges by making noise, and judges sometimes feel that, okay, that round went the other way. So sometimes the hometown crowd, much more than the field, much big advantage. <laughs> and, and Brewer thinks he's jinxed on foreign soil. You'll recall he thought he was robbed. Two controversial split decision losses to Sven Otke in Germany. Let's get your keys to victory, all right? Okay, Steve. Joe Calzaghe searches for supremacy at 168 pounds in a defining fight as he faces perhaps his biggest threat in the very hungry and dangerous Charles Brewer. Number one for Joe Calzaghe, overall speed. He's one of the fastest super middleweights in the world. Number two, sharp counterpunch. Brewer's going to come at him. He wants to make him miss and make him pay for it. And lastly, a straight left hand. As a southpaw, it's one of the most effective weapons he has, and he's very accurate with it. Here we see Chris Eubank on the right against Joe Calzag. He comes in, but against a guy like Calzag, you cannot leave your hands down. He leaves his hands down as he backs out, and he gets hit with that crisp straight left hand. He's very accurate and very fast. He blinks, and he's down. Charles Brewer, he has to establish the jab. If he can out jab Calzaghe, he can help control the fight. Also work the body, it's the best way to slow down a very quick southpaw. And lastly, straight right hand. He has a good one and against a southpaw, it can be a very effective weapon. Brewer here on the left against Gary Ballard, uses that jab to offset Ballard. Keep it in his face, use it as a range finder. And also keep his hands up, keep something in his face, and then hits him with a crushing right hand when he's not looking. He's still looking for the jab, Sets up now a double jab, and there comes a the right hand right behind. He uses the jab as a range finder and to keep his hands up and crushes him with the right hand. Well, after tonight, will Joe Calzaghe finally be accepted as a true world champion, or will he need to cross the Atlantic? Much depends on his performance here against Charles Brewer. It is time for the feature bout of the evening. Get ready to welcome Charles Brewer entering hostile territory. You can hear the boos beginning. He said he's been looking forward to this since 1998. Here he comes in front of the American flags. The former IBF Super Middleweight champ with three defenses. Since that wild fight with Eccles 1-0, outpointing a nondescript opponent over six months ago. He's going to milk this as the crowd gets it on. Well, aside from age, the, the many wars, the notion that Philly fighters are notorious for leaving into the gym. Can he deal with Calzaghe's hand speed, pinpoint accuracy, and power in light of his tenuous chin? Also, he had to lose weight fast. I well, wonder if that's a factor as well, Bobby. You know what? He said after speaking with him, he's trained. He had southpaws from 140 pounds, speed to 220 for strength. Many of them very accurate, very tough. But what you can't train for, you can't prepare or improve, is your chin. That's the big question here. I'm sure he's in shape. I'm sure he's ready to go. It's a matter of does his chin hold up, and can he be effective offensively? Yeah, remember more recently dropped by Antoine Eccles, thought to be a blown-up super middleweight. The fans here in the U.K. may best know Brewer for beating one of their beloved fighters. Harold Graham, perhaps the greatest British boxer never to win a world title. And now the crowd on his feet, getting ready for Joe Calzaghe. High anticipation for Calzaghe, and there he is. The champion, the southpaw. 
who receives the star treatment here in his backyard of Cardiff. He is revered. Calzaghe, two years younger than the 32-year-old Brewer. The height is even. Biggest disparity in reach. Huge eight-inch advantage for the challenger. At yesterday's weigh-in, both came in under, but Brewer needed two attempts to make weight. And the key rules for this world title fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight is ruled a technical draw. If it happens after the end of four, they go to the scorecards as they sing and chant here in the Cardiff International Arena. We're getting ready for our main event, Joe Calzaghe and Charles Brewer for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. The official introductions from the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance, live and exclusive on Sky Sports across the UK, and to our boxing fans joining us around the world, we welcome you to the International Arena here in the beautiful city of Cardiff, Wales. It is time for the featured bout of the evening, and it's all brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Showtime and Red Square. This bout coming away, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. The president is Francisco Valcarcel. Supervisor at ringside is Charles Giles. Along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge is Lord Brooks of Tremorfa. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Rouen, France, Robin Dolpierre. From London, England, Roy Francis. And from Las Vegas, Nevada, in the United States, Chuck Jampa. And our referee in charge of this bout, working in this his 21st world title bout, from St. Paul, Minnesota, in the United States, Mark Nelson. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world from Cardiff, Wales, it is showtime! Introducing to you first, the 
challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim. Joining us from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 and 3 quarter pounds, or 167 and 3 quarter U.S. pounds. His record stands at 37 wins, 8 losses, 26 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number six super middleweight in the world by the WBO. Please welcome the former IBF super middleweight champion of the world, Charles the Hatchet Brewer. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. All right, Joe, step back, gentlemen. Charles, you've already received your instructions in the dressing room for the WBO super middleweight title. You know exactly what I expect, a clean championship fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Obey the bell. Any questions from Mr. Kalzaki's chief second, Mr. Brewer's? Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. An amazing atmosphere here in this arena, one of nationalism and pride. At times it is deafening. It is not a great division, but will it be a great fight? Brewer said he's gonna come out, try to knock Calzaghe out, he does not want this to go to the judges. Kalzaki will look to put on an impressive show for the American TV audience. Will he be over anxious, too eager to please his hometown fans as the singing starts and the belting starts for Kalzaki. Nice little right hand on the inside by Brewer, but you can see that Kalzaki already has Charles Brewer a little hesitant. Right now, both guys very tense. You can see it in their bodies. Calzaghe with power, particularly in his left. Brewer with power in both hands. But as we pointed out time and time again, the chin on Brewer is questionable. Both look to get right to it. The southpaw Calzaghe going to the body. Back comes Brewer to the Watch head. your heads. Fighting on the inside. Beautiful left hook by Charles Brewer. Fought Charles Eggie very clean. Shook him up a little bit. And they are going at it. Trading away. The feeling out process is now over. <laughs> Complete. It took a little over a minute. Charles Eggie laying a good straight left hand. Watch here. your heads. Right on Brewer's chin. No bad effects. left aimed at the right ear of Brewer that was blocked. Charles Brewer said that he can't win these rounds by a little bit. He has to dominate the rounds. He doesn't believe he can win a decision here. Got that. He landing with a left hook to the air. Galzaghi seems to have the better hand speed. And he is very accurate. He's a sharpshooter. Calzaghe just walked into a straight right. He landed a good back. counter right hook, too. He shook Brewer up with that right hand. Watch your heads, guys. Get your heads out of there. Mark Nelson, the third man, warning them about the heads with a southpaw and the ankles. It's going to happen. Here's Calzaghe opening up. He hurt Brewer, but Brewer came back nice with a right hand and two lefts to the body. But he staggered Brewer. 
A good flurry by Joe Calzaghe. Punch out. Freak. I got it. Don't punch. Near the end of the round. Good job, guys. Calzaghe stuffing the jab. Get out of there. Freak. I got it. Good, good job. A lot of action in the first round. As expected. Two punchers. Calzaghe being pretty effective on the inside. A nice right hook and an uppercut, followed by a nice combination of five or six punches. That's where he staggered Brewer a little bit. Got Charles Brewer's attention immediately. Toward the end of the round, they don't want to stop punching. Brewer loading up to see him missing wildly. And now kind of holding his head out there. He holds on, but they punch well after that bell sound. Then round one. Round two scheduled for 12 for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. An all-action first round, as Bobby pointed out, perhaps a slight edge to the champion. Calzaghe wearing the black with the white trim. Brewer in the white with the red trim. And Calzaghe's corner was furious with him for fighting what they said was Brewer's fight. Don't give him a chance to win. Fight your fight. Get out of there. Punch out. Freak, don't punch. I got it. Here we go. Brewer, a natural left-hander who fights in the conventional stance. His left is stronger than Watch his right. Watch your heads. And with Calzaghe, a southpaw, punch Brewer's there. power punch is closer to the champion. Like right there. You know what I thought? The Brewer is much more effective with that left hook than he was with the straight right hand in the first round. Maybe that's one of the reasons. Calzaghe, who punches in bunches, lots of combinations. Here's a left hand to the jaw by Calzaghe, and then a, a left uppercut on the chin. The Brewer stands right in there. Watch your heads. They just go toe to toe. That was blocked, that left cut by Calzaghe by the arm of Brewer. Boy, there just hasn't been much let up. For super middleweights, this is a pace that I don't think either of them can maintain for 12 rounds. It's just too many punches and too many hard punches. Hey, the attrition hey, factor will set in fast. Galzaghi with a big right hand to the jaw. And now he opens up. He's got the trouble. Break the punch. I got it. He heard Brewer, but Brewer moved his head and got out of harm's way pretty well. He had Brewer buckled for And he was smart there, he used his head, and he moved his head, and he got out of harm's way. He withstood that fierce a lot from uh, Calzaghe. Punch out of there. Get out of there. Watch your heads. There's another uppercut to the jaw. Brewer stays up. He's in trouble again. He was off balance. He hangs in there. A rough round for the Philadelphian. Loading up a little too much, starting to miss. And he's getting caught in the way back with a counterpunch by Calzaghe. Freak, don't punch, I got it. Which is where he's doing most Good of the damage. Good job. Yeah, left wasn't as solid as Calzaghe would like. Straight right hand eaten by Calzaghe, but not much behind it. He's taking a lot of steam out of Brewer. Time! Big round for the champion. You let him come down the pipe with the straight left. You gotta step around to your left, Hatchet. You can't be in front of him. You gotta keep stepping around to your left and throw it over and right. 
You got to throw your overhand right. You got to keep on doing what we were doing in the gym. You got to do it. Yeah, you watch Calzaghe rock Brewer. There's the right hook and the left hand. And you see Brewer gets hesitates and he gets hit with another combination of rights and lefts. Three, four, five, six punches. And he starts to bob and weave to save himself. He was in trouble. You notice Calzaghe does not hesitate once he hurts it. Different angles, same sequence. He gets the right hook in, lands flush and left uppercut. And then he just keeps going. He tees off. Once he hurts him, he keeps firing. He follows up. Not one and done, but four, five, six, and seven. Round three scheduled for 12. We'll see how uh, Brewer reacts. And if uh, Calzaghe jumps right on him to see if uh, Brewer is all right after that wild second round. Brewer took a lot of punishment. And he eats another couple of left hands. Calzaghe goes to town again. And Brewer talks to him. See, something that Kelzaki does that's deceiving is he'll throw a couple of pity pat real quick punches just to get your hands busy and then load up on the next two and really Freak. hurt. No punch. Very no effective, no very smart. Let's go. The supremely confident southpaw, Joe Kelzaki, continues to have his way, pushing, Kels pushing Brewer's head back. We heard Brewer's trainer, his corner, Bobby Boogaloo Watts, tell him you can't leave your head just sitting there stationary for him to hit it. You got to move it, step to the side, and come back. Step out the side, give him angles. Brewer just coming straight at him, though, not using too many angles. Brewer with a few answers now, but Calzaghe comes firing back. Off the top of the head, a right hand by Calzaghe. That stunned Brewer. And they continue to go at it. Some nice body work there by Brewer. I'm wondering myself if he's prepared for this type of pace. And maybe it's anticipated Joel. that Calzaghe okay. is not. Nearly a low blow by Calzaghe. Hey. No, no, getting no, no, cautioned by Mark okay. Nelson. You mentioned Boogaloo Watts, the trainer for Brewer. Big marvelous Marvin Hagler in 1976, but then crushed in the rematch by Hagler. A stylish Philadelphia middleweight in his day. Nice left cross to the jaw. And then a combination of the head by Calzaghe, who continues to pour it on. And fighting going backwards successfully Keep is him up, Charles. Calzaghe. Keep him up. The body. It's a nice Brewer. hook there again by Charles Brewer, but not enough. Calzaghe throwing more punches. Calzaghe answering back with beautiful counter punching. Left hooks to the head. Get out of there. Watch your heads, guys. Brewer just winding up and wailing. Just a split second slower is Brewer than Calzaghe, and it's costing him on a lot of these exchanges to come in second place. An incredible pace as we approach the final 20 seconds of round three. Watch it must heads. feel like the tenth for Brewer already. Where's on the backs of his trucks? Two for you, Bob. I remember, I think it said one for you, Bob, yeah, when he fought Antoine Eccles. I know he's going for his second world title. He's a former IBF Super champ. champ. Maybe that's what that means. They're both bopping off the head. Time! Amazing action. Bring them right back, Hatchet. Bang that body, you back there, man. Bang them kidney shots, man. Get them kidney shots going, Hatchet. Bring them right here and bring them up the middle. You gotta keep working, so you gotta keep your hands going, Hatchet. Then you press it, but just don't walk in. Don't just walk straight in. Move your head, Hatchy. Don't go straight in because he just look. Then he do up in this shit. Okay, he only just tap him. Then he coming over with the straight left. Brewer getting shots flush on the ear, his jaw, right hooks, and straight left hands. Just as his trainer Bobby Watts was telling him, you're coming straight up the middle. You're not giving him anything to look for. You're right there for him, and he's got to work underneath and step around. He can't come straight in like that. Calzaghe's too fast and far too active. At this pace, with this many punches thrown, it's going to be very surprising if this reaches the distance. Brewer said the winner will be whoever wants it the punch. most. I got it. That's okay. Whoever has the strongest will to win. And right now, he's just trying to hang in there and break the spirit of the champion, Joe Calzaghe. Round four scheduled for 12. 
Actually, that, I don't think that was as much the punch as it was. It still hit him. Yep. But Calzaghe coming on, throwing everything at Brewer. Put the heads out of there. Oh, what a fan's fight. This is definitely a fight fan's fight. There's nothing but bad blood here. say that he didn't think Calzaghe hit very hard. I wonder if he'd rethink that now. I'm sure he's going to fess up afterwards and say that Calzaghe did stagger sometimes and some of those punches had to hurt or his legs wouldn't be doing Leon Earl. And so much for that level of opposition of Calzaghe. That crew of question. The thing about Calzaghe is they underestimate his speed and speed times math, as I always say, generates that destructive power. And Calzaghe's very quick. He's not a one-punch knockout artist, but he's quick and crisp. And he will get your attention the with those combinations. A cumulative effect, as they say, can do wonders. Particularly for Calzaghe. Peppering with the jab now, Calzaghe to the nose. Brewer whacking to the midsection on the inside. And then he goes upstairs. Both showing their toughness. Calzaghe never really in danger. Calzaghe. All over Brewer. What's holding Brewer up? Brewer looks like he's ready to go. But he continues to fight. Brewer's all on right now. This is a list of real stay up and stand. What an incredible display of guts by Brewer. Once again, that speed factor may be underestimated by Brewer. Calzaghe's getting there first, and he's getting there better. Boy, Brewer's got to be getting the respect of Calzaghe here, no question. Get out. A stirring first four rounds. Freak. We're gonna watch the little slip here. Kazagi comes in and just just sort of see the feet, right foot stepped on the left foot, southpaw versus orthodox. The Calzaghe with a lead left, it's sort of an overhand slap a little bit, right there. Not real hard, but point getter, and continually in the face, Charles Brewer. And here again, Brewer's coming forward, giving him a squared off target, not giving him angles, walking straight in. Charles does not get out of the way of any of those punches. He gets hit flustered almost every one of them. Brewer was standing at an ordinate amount of punishment as we enter round five, scheduled for 12 for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. The champion, the Southpaw, Calzaghe, the hometown hero in the black. Brewer, the challenger for Philadelphia in the white with red trim. Brewer ate a lot of punches in the last round, but never went down. The great combination upstairs by Calzaghe. Calzaghe having his way. Again, through the defense. Now to the body. And now a left hook to the chin by Calzaghe. Partially blocked. Calzaghe's speed being the biggest factor in this fight right now. And he got through with a straight left Freak, hand no, 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 punch. to the head. The speed and his accuracy are making this fight to be his round after round. Calzaghe having a field day. Freak! Brewer's oh, got been it. down. As he puts it a handful of times, Calzaghe never down in his career. Calzaghe, who averages about uh, four rounds into round five. 
You know, as you start absorbing more and more punishment, Punch your out. ability to give out punishment becomes less and less because your body is absorbing a lot of pain and punishment on its own. Not only does the fatigue factor set in, but also the pain being it. absorbed and the punishment being absorbed will lessen your ability to put out. Well, I'll tell you what, Brewer must be in phenomenal condition to be withstanding this kind of punishment. Round after round. We Punch have slowed down significantly Freak. this round, it. Steve. Okay. Absolutely. Let's see if Calzaghe can take advantage. Wailing to the body. Now upstairs, Calzaghe. Well, he's democratic. Oh, a whacking left cross to the head by Calzaghe. You can hear that in the back row. Over 5,000 strong cheering on their champion in the black truck. Freak. I got it. Or some wondering what's holding Brewer up. The hatchet with a wild swing and a miss. Another wild miss. They're starting to load up, get a little tired, you start loading up, you start really having Freak. the fatigue factor set in. You load up and start missing, that was really caught. Fatigue and frustration. He just walked into a flurry. Hit Brewer. Calzaghe coming at him from all angles. Get off his neck. See, Brewer has the reach, eight-inch reach advantage for each hand, so he has he can get there first, but he's not quick enough to get there first against Calzaghe. He's employing, imploring, and totally different. Here comes Calzaghe. Brewer with a triple. Oh, no, 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 I got it. From the right nostril. Time. And Brewer happy to hear that thing. Yeah, Hatchet, you gotta use a jab, man. You can't walk him down. You gotta use the jab. You gotta use the jab, Hatchet. Okay, see it. How's it going, Charles? You gotta, you gotta right? use the jab, yeah. bro. Start showing me some more, okay? Okay, Hatchet, you the one who stop it, bro. You the one who stop it, Hatchet. You gotta use that jab, man. You gotta have your balance, Hatchet. Brewer being a stationary target gets in trouble again. Comes walking straight in. There, sticks his head straight up in the air. Calzaghe takes it off with right hand. Not big hard punches, but again, attrition. He just wears you down. Another angle, there's the right hand. It pivots him, hits him with the right hook to the jaw and temple area. Brewer does his best to get out of the way. He does well, but can't win, he can't even win around this way. You heard Bobby Boogaloo Watts in the corner of Brewer say, hey, you can't walk him down. You got to use the jab. And uh, don't forget, the referee, Mark Nelson, told Brewer, you got to pick it up, Charles. Punch out. Nelson watching Brewer very closely now. It's a different look in Charles Brewer's eyes right now. One of frustration and almost defeat. I know his heart's in this, and he wants his bad, but he is getting met at every corner. Punch out. Brewer does Freak. not have the I answers for anything that Calzaghe's doing. He does have that look of resignation, but showing tremendous heart. He's got to work him here in the jab. He has a longer jab, a pretty quick jab, and a pretty good jab. But he's just walking, as Bobby Watt said, just walking him down. Calzaghe's too fast for this. And he's trying to fight Calzaghe's fight. He's got to go back to the fundamentals, back to boxing, back to style. Freak! I got it. Right now, he's a human rag doll. And he's flailing away, missing, and Calzaghe's just doing a number on the top of his head. Straight right hand by Brewer, but it missed. And you notice that the punch significance of, of the punch of Brewer has completely lessened. Severely less in numbers and in power. He's flat tired and worn out from all the punishment that Calzaghe has dished out. Calzaghe just walked into a straight punch by hand and it pushed his head back momentarily. Freak, I got it. But no left took the follow and no fought. real power on that right hand. Wild swing and a miss on a left hook try by uh, Brewer. Comes through with a left hand there, but it's blocked by the right glove of Calzaghe. There's a better right hand by Brewer, picking up the steam on some of these shots. Get off his head. 
There you go, Charles. Maybe feeling if I can just get one or two punches in now. If I can connect, if I can get this guy's attention, maybe I can turn the tide somewhat. He's going to need more than one or two, and he's going to need to do it working in behind Freak. the jab. Calzaghe's reflexes are pretty good. They're almost as quick as his hand speed. He reacts well offensively and defensively. And the lefty sets up beautiful again. Getting through. They trade punches. What an exchange here, but it's all Calzaghe. Joe put a couple of pretty good solid shots, too, and show no ill effects from him. But Freak. Calzaghe's punches a lot harder. And several of his got in as well. one and done you watch the straight right hand and nothing to come behind it no counter punches no follow-up punches no combinations even after Calzaghe hits him he doesn't counter back and here's Calzaghe with a four or five punch combination and comes back with two or three more even though Brewer is firing Calzaghe is still firing back there was 10 or 12 punches unleashed in that sequence that's why Calzaghe is winning this fight so handy gotta get off son Bobby, I think it's a moot point, but how do you have it halfway? Six zip. I can't really come and give a round to Brewer. He's fought some great moments in certain rounds, but not one an entire round. Brewer came out winging, but no damage. Brewer better start turning this real fast. When he watched the replay of his fight with Eccles, he said, what am I doing? Why am I doing that? I wonder if he'd say that again about his performance tonight. It's round seven. Notice who's going forward now. The champion, Joe Calzaghe, not Charles Brewer. A telltale sign of something for sure. Yeah, Calzaghe just continues to flail away. Got him with a straight left to the head there. Brewer's in trouble again. Freak, in I got him. Corner. Speed and accuracy. He underestimated his speed. He underestimated his endurance. And he definitely underestimated his power, I'm sure of it. No question. By the comments he was making in the days and weeks leading up to this fight, he may have been taking uh, Calzaghe a little too lightly, but I don't know how you can do that. A lot of that stuff, of course, is just silly hype, but if he really believed it, forget about it. He had to know that this guy's got talent, Calzaghe, and he hits hard. He's only fooling himself if he thinks otherwise. And here goes Calzaghe. So now what's happening is Calzaghe is working at will. He pot shotting Brewer. Brewer's not making Calzaghe worry about anything coming back. He can do what he wants when he wants. The rest when he wants fire. And if this continues, Calzaghe almost certainly putting himself on the boxing map with this one after struggling for recognition. But he really wants Bernard Hopkins or Roy Jones. Should he get by Charles Brewer, and it's looking better every second. Calzaghe is a very difficult style to look good, good, good against from anyone. That was the best combination of the yeah. entire round. The Brewer, right hand and left hook, but that's it. And he's done. He didn't follow it up with anything. He's got to be tired. He's the obviously first, frustrated. Two minutes and change. It's been all Joe Calzaghe. One combination will not win the round. He did have to scramble and lose two pounds quickly. Yesterday, Freak, I got it. No, 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 it's okay. A Brewer. Punch out of there. Brewer with a big left hand there. It got Calzaghe's attention. He sure did. You know, Calzaghe covering up well. Brewer coming on with a left. Dagger Calzaghe. Time! Okay. Big finish by the hatchet. Trying to chop Calzaghe down at the belt. You heard Calzaghe with that uppercut, Steve. I tell you what, son. I'm going to empty on this. Let him have a go. 
Sammy Jones. 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 He hits him with a couple of decent shots, but nothing really serious. Nice left hook on the inside. Watch this uppercut, though. Underneath, he hits him with an uppercut that really rocks his head and staggers him as we follow the sequence. That left hook was the one that first started, but there's another punch on the tail end of this. That right under there, that really hurts Kalzaghi. You see his legs get a little funny. Let's see where this takes Charles Brewer as we enter round number eight. It's interesting in Calzaghi's corner, they said you have five more rounds in you. And I thought to myself, well, if he doesn't, well, you know, he's been winning every round. All he's got to do basically is stand for the next five. Pretty much. And stay out of the way of those Brewer punches. Now he's keeping Brewer at bay, keeping his distance, fighting more on the outside, Calzaghi. And he gets him, gets Brewer coming in with a left hand. Get off his neck. The best left hook that Brewer's landed in a while, too, like the last round, just looking to get one of those shots in. Possibility Calzaghi maybe used up a little too much energy in dominating those first seven yeah. rounds, who knows? Brewer perhaps hoping that uh, Calzaghi has preached himself up all right. over the first seven plus round. I've seen it happen before. Yeah. Preach! I got it. Oh, it's okay. Well, again, we saw what happened last Saturday night in West Virginia. When David Tua was behind the entire night against Okendo and then leveled the. Uh, Preach! Okendo in the ninth round. Okendo refused to go down, actually, but he was all over him. And the fight was stopped. Nice sharp combinations by Calzaghi. Look at these shots. Beautiful hand speed by Calzaghi. Punch out. Get out of there. Brewer holding Freak. and leaning now. Calzaghi in tremendous shape. Get off his neck. Stop from Calzaghi. Busy, active, no let up. Very accurate, too, as quickly as punches, but one of the most important things about that is they land where they're meant to go. Freak! I got it. Brewer's punch is not having that much effect. The left hook to the temple. So you notice in that sequence, Calzaghi threw three, then Brewer threw two, then Calzaghi threw three more. He starts and he finishes. Look at the volume of punches, the high work rate by Calzaghi. Left hand partially blocked, wasn't solid. Work out of there. As we head for the bell, round eight. Freak, I got it. Okay. Well, the countdown continues for Lewis versus Tyson as we close in on this highly anticipated spectacle. It's just 49 days to the long-awaited meeting of Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson for the World Heavyweight Championship. This fight will be available only on pay-per-view live from Memphis, Tennessee on June 8th. So mark your calendars, that's June 8th, as these two bitter rivals meet in what figures to be the biggest fight in heavyweight boxing history, only on pay-per-view. Okay, now catch it. Now you listen to what I say, now you keep doing that, okay? Now this is the only way you're gonna do it. Chop the right hand back right down the middle. Okay, here you go. Brewer has fought into the ninth round six times. He goes five and three with just one knockout. 
Calzaghe 6-0 in fights that have gone into the ninth. Scheduled for 12 for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. It has been all Joe Calzaghe wearing the black trunks, the southpaw from right here in Wales. Brewer has taken a lot of punishment to his credit. He has never gone down. A guy with a reputation of having a weak chin. Calzaghe coming forward. Brewer again in difficulty. Brewer almost looks like in his eyes like a, like a dis disinterested look. Steve, I, I, I can't understand it. Again, a look of resignation in the eyes of uh, Charles Brewer. He's going for the Wait, whole no, 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 punch no, no, now, Brewer. I don't think he really has the choice. If something doesn't happen real soon, this fight will be over, and he will have lost his great opportunity. Yep. Mark Nelson, the third man, continues to keep a very close Freak. eye on Charles Brewer. Okay. But Brewer is offering back. So it's, Freak. it's I got tough it. to punch. stop it. Right. Galzaghi has looked tremendous here tonight. On both ends of the floor, as they say. Offensively and defensively. I got it. Here we go. He has shown his hand speed, his accuracy, and his power. He has been able to put Brewer down, though. But that peppering jab is so annoying. Right there. He stepped around nicely too. He's given angles to Brewer. He's made him work, made him look for him, made him miss a lot. Another barrage by Calzaghe. Freak! I got it. All right. Calzaghe picking his spots, finds the Watch openings. Out. Freak, I got it. It was a terrific left hook to the body by Brewer, but again, he's, he's one and done. He's not going to work. And now as they're both getting tired, when they're getting close like that, all Calzag gets to do is tie him up. Freak. Brewer out of gas from all the punishment. He's taking a lot of shots to the body out of the head. He just looks worn out, Brewer. Freak, I got it. There's that beautiful jab again by Calzaghe with the Get right hand. Time! Take the glove. Get the tape here. You walking, you walking in on him. You walking in on him. Here goes Sid. You have to do this. I need to work in his face. Okay, here you go. You got to get off, Hatchet. You walking in. You cannot walk in, Hatchet. You got to move. Do not. You have to. Block the skills. Use the blades. All right. Stick the jab. Move away. Jab. Come on, just straight there. in the Brewer corner are futile. Brewer knows what he has to do, but he just can't do it. Calzaghe Kalz knows what he has to do, and he's doing it. Don't, don't watch. See, it's very easy to draw it Keep up on paper. Up. This is how you it's win. Right. This is it's how you up. win. This is what you do. But then doing it while the other man's trying to implement his style, and his strategy, that's a whole new ball. What does Brewer have left? A right hand. That's, that's the one. one. That was the one that Boogaloo Watts has been telling him to throw it straight down the middle. Stop looping and get it straight. That one landed, landed well. But Calzaghe is showing a good chin. Freak. I got it. That's all right. He's never been down. 32 and 0, 27 okay. knockouts. Joe Calzaghe. Brewer 37 and 8, 26 knockouts. Calzaghe 10 and 0 in world title bouts with six knockouts. Brewer four and two with three knockouts in championship fights. Don't hold his neck.
Well, if this goes to the uh, judges' cards, you know one thing. Freak! I got it. Charles Brewer's not going to get jobs tonight. No, that won't be necessary. Freak! That's okay. But it may be at least a moral victory, but nobody likes moral victories in sports. Nah. <laughs> Work out of there. Heard that many times before. Doesn't mean anything. Punch out. Again. Calzaghe has his way on the inside. Oh, over Brewer. Pounding away. But Brewer refuses Freak. to go down. Got it. Showing tremendous heart if nothing else. I think Charles Freak. Brewer's plan backfired a little bit. I don't think he expected as good a movement from Joe Calzaghe, as good a counterpunching or a strength or speed. I think he missed I just Freak. think he misjudged him. Another flurry by Calzaghe. And a lot of those punches getting in there. No knockdowns, no cuts. Freak. I got it. As we approach the final 20 seconds of the 10th round, scheduled for 12. Punch out. Freak. Get your hand out of there. It's all right. There you go. Work out of there. Time. Two rounds. As we go inside the ropes with Bobby Chase. We'll see time after time, round after round, Calzaghe throwing four, five, and six punches at a time because he's not loading up. He's also moving. He's not giving Charles Brewer something to hit. Punch and get out of the way. Not loading up the shot. Quick, speed, accurate. Charles Brewer on the other hand, loading up, missing big shots. See, hit the shot, hit, bang, bang, in and out, bing, in and out. Very quick, using his speed, using his agility, not loading up, making the shots be heavy or tiresome. This is this, son, please. Well, Brewer has been passed 10 rounds six times. He's four and two as we hit the championship rounds, round 11. Calzaghe has fought into the championship rounds four times, winning all four by decision. Do you have Calzaghe winning every single round? I really can't find a, a round that I had that could give the Charles Brewer as much as I'd like to. He's fought a gallant fight. Break. He's shown a lot of bravery, a lot of heart, job, a lot guys. of determination. He's clearly shown me he wants it bad, but he just doesn't have Freak. what it takes today to take it from Joe Kazak. And as you have pointed out, uh, perhaps underestimating the overall skills Punch of out. Joe Calzaghe. Recall Don't before the him. fight, I got it. that he said. Early in the fight, in the first four rounds, a couple of rounds that he started out were Calzaghe. Uh, Calzaghe staggered him, and as soon as that happens, that tips the round back because your inability to take a punch Don't sometimes held against you. When you get wobbled, you lose points. Freak! I got it. And I'm sure many folks oh, here in the, uh, in the crowd here at the CIA, as they call it, the Card of International Arena, thought Brewer was about ready to go early in the fight, but he hung in there. Don't hold, Joe. Calzaghe looks as fresh now as he looked in the first round. So you notice he hit Brewer on the way in, spun Brewer around and hit him on the way out. Again, spinning him to the right, Freak. turning him and hitting. Brewer doesn't have the answers for him. He's not stepping, he's not cutting Calzaghe off. The right hand's not coming down the middle. And when he does, it's one at a time. Oh, okay. Okay. To this point, yeah, Joe Calzaghe Joe, rising to the occasion. Him, okay? In tremendous shape. Still bouncing around. Like it's early in the fight here at round 11. And still throwing a, a lot of punches and still landing. And he's got some pop in those punches. Freak! Even this deep into the fight. Again, setting up that nice left with the right jab is Calzaghe. Another combination to the head. What a work rate all night long by the Watch champion. Watch your hands, guys. 
Break. Come on. Being smart. He's not loading up. Step He's back. firing quickly, accurately, stepping off, and doing it again. And he also knows now that he can uh, take risks. He's not being hurt by uh, Charles Brewer's punches, so he can get inside, pretty much do whatever he wants. Freak. It's not Charles in charge. It's, and it's Joe in charge. Especially now, Brewer Keep has to up. work his way in with hands firing because if they get close enough to touch, Calzag's not just going to sit with him like they did earlier. He's just going to tie him up. Calzag's he just needs to last another round and a half. That's it. The champion just too fast. Just too fast, too quick. All over Brewer again. Pretty much doing whatever he wants. Last round, bro, you gotta go for broke. You gotta go for broke. Gotta put everything in the seal up. You can't lose your balance. Gotta go for broke, baby. Gotta go for broke. Bring them punches up, Hatchie. You gotta bring them up in the inside. When you get inside, Hatchie, you got to Charles, let your right? hands go. Last round, touch gloves. Okay, Hatchie, you gotta go for broke, son. You gotta get off. It's all I said. Come on, chill. Give me now. Get me, get me, get me, get me. There is no question. Charles Brewer needs a knockout to win this fight. And you heard Bobby Bugalow watch say, "You got to throw it all out there now, son." They took the for the 12th and final round for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship. Incredible pace to this fight, but what a job by the champion, Joe Calzaghe, all night long. He has had Brewer in his hip pocket. Freak! I got it. Good job. Here we go. Brewer needs a knockout. He's got to do it in dramatic fashion. See, you notice right there, Brewer came in with his hands down, looking to oh, load up. Well, as soon as they got close, Calzaghe ties it. him up. Come on, guys. He's got to work his hands going on the way in. There's no way around it. Well, Calzaghe should just be safe. Freak. I got it. No, no, no. Don't do anything careless. Brewer's latest knockout came in round 10 against England's Harold Brown. He needs more late heroics here. As the crowd urges on Calzaghe. Point of round 12. All Brewer, Freak. all Brewer has to do right is knock him out. All Calzaghe has to do is stay away. I'll take the stay away gun. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's what Joe is doing right now. Wild swing and a miss by Brewer. Freak. No, 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 that's okay. One. We approach the final minute. Punch out of Calzaghe there. Calzaghe, freak, in I got complete it. command, has never been in trouble. Brewer's been in trouble on several occasions, but never went down. To reiterate, Brewer losing Work just about there. every round, freak, but showing heart. Showed That's a tremendous amount thing of heart, a lot of determination, and he showed that he came here prepared to fight, but he underestimated, I still believe he underestimated the speed and the pop on the punches of Calzaghe.
Joe Calzaghe's wife enjoying the action. Calzaghe plants a, a kiss. Good show sportsmanship on the face of Charles Brewer. He was planting a lot on the face of Brewer all night. He got kissed in a different way, though. Yeah. Well, there is absolutely no question as to what the outcome will be here. A big night for hometowner Joe Calzaghe, a rough one for Philadelphia, Charles Brewer. And the embrace. And I think Charles Brewer will be singing a different tune about Joe Calzaghe after this one. He's going to show some respect now after disrespecting Calzaghe before the fight. Could have a fight though, wouldn't it? I'm pretty sure his opinion of Calzaghe has changed dramatically. Oh, yes. Without question. Well, Calzaghe not able to end it within five as he predicted, but he'll win convincingly. And the furious finish, Calzaghe still looking to impress and maybe get the knockout late in the last round. A little bit of a slip com combined in there made it look worse for Charles Brewer, but he got he got tagged good. He got tattooed pretty well in there. You see him get with the left hand. That was probably the best punch of the combination. And literally reverse going for broke. It's Calzaghe going for broke just to get Brewer out of there. So now to look at it from a different angle. Brewer, to his credit, giving it all he has, but that left hand right there hurt him as well as that little bit of a slip, making it look worse. The Calzaghe all over him and very accurate. Once again, quick and on the money. His punch is landing. Brewer's not. Perhaps a complete shutout. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of ringside, Roy Francis scores about 117 to 112. Judge Robin Dolpierre scores about 118 to 111. Chuck Jampa scores about 119 to 109. All three in favor of the winner and still champion. Decisive victory for Joe Calzaghe. The fans salute him. I'll go along with Las Vegas' Chuck Giampa, who had it the most accurate, I thought. 119-109. Yeah, one round, the 11th round, the Brewer might have snuck out. So, Bobby, what do you think? Was it impressive enough to put Calzaghe on boxing's world map? Well, he's on the map already, being an undefeated world champion and with some convincing performances. He's, he's certainly on the map. But as far as, like we said before, launched, he still needs to be the big name. Charles Brewer coming here with eight losses, stopped by fighters that are considered lesser talented than Joe Calzaghe. So what does that say? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, he remains undefeated, makes his 10th successful defense of the title, going to 33-0 now. 11-0 in world title fights, 11-0 in Cardiff. Brewer uh, falls to 37-9. and Well, what's in the immediate future for Calzaghe? Will his next fight be in the United States? There's talk of Calzaghe fighting WBO 160-pound champ Harry Simon. Calzaghe has mentioned undisputed middleweight champ. I see your uh, I'd like your to see that your fight. Head. Yeah, I'd like to see him and Simon. I, I like him uh, to beat Simon. There's talk of Calzaghe Hopkins or Roy Jones. Let's review the judges' scores again. Pretty near a shutout as Chuck Giampa had it. Yeah, I think Chuck Jamba had it the most accurate. Uh, 117 to 112 is a five point difference in a 12 round fight. It's like 8 3 and 1. Hard to give three rounds to our boy here, Brewer. All right, so a unanimous decision for Joe Calzaghe. Retains his WBO super middleweight crown, which he has had since 1997. We've got a very game but beaten Charles the Hatchet Brewer standing by with our John Rawling. Charles, that was a tremendous fight. You weren't too, uh, you weren't too complimentary about Joe Calzaghe in the run-up to this. What do you think now? Well, I think that he um, performed well this evening, and um, 
He's a champion and he fought like a champion. You know? He did what he came to do. And what about your own performance? Because you really went in there and you tried to match fire with fire, as you said you would. Yeah, exactly. Um, like I said before, we both have aggressive style. We both are fighters that like to come forward. And uh, maybe it just was that this evening I was a bit slow on, on my offense. And uh, he beat me to the punch a couple of times. But uh, it was a good fight, very good fight. There was so much uh, excitement surrounding this fight. The crowd really hyped up Joe Calzaghe. Was that a factor? No, I, like I said before, to me this is business as usual. This is my 46th fight as a professional. I've been in this position many a times before in venues that are larger than this, a much larger crowd. So the hometown crowd advantage didn't bother me at all. In the run-up to the fight, you had to lose a bit of weight, a pound and three quarters over at the weigh-in. Was that a factor? Were your preparations right? No, that wasn't a factor at all. I, maybe it's something that goes on in the UK, they make a big deal out of it, but in the States, this happens quite frequently, and I'm um, not to say the fighters don't come in the fights unprepared, but this is something that happened, and um, it had no effect on me this evening, not at all. Over 700 punches Calzaghe threw, you threw over 600. Have you ever been in a fight as grueling as that one? Uh, yeah, I would say on my way up to the top, I, uh, I went through some, some true battles coming through the um, legendary Blue Island in Philadelphia. I've, I've had my share of gym wars coming up through Philadelphia. Charles, I know you're a loser tonight, but nevertheless, that was a phenomenal performance. Well done. Thank you. All right, John, thank you very much. And obviously, uh, understandably disappointed, Charles the Hatchet Brewer, who really did try to fight fire with fire and uh, probably went about it the wrong way here tonight. And as you said, underestimated hold on, hold on. Joe Kalzaki, who is standing alongside our John Rawling right now. John? Joe, congratulations. That was a, a phenomenal performance. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, very, very tough fight. Who said Charles Brewer? I uh, was under some illusion that Charles Brewer couldn't take a shot, but believe me, he took some excellent punches here tonight. And uh, it's a lot of fighters who went down from them in combinations, and he come back, hit me hard. Tonight I showed heart, I showed my, obviously my resilience, my chin, and my stamina, and my will to re remain undefeated champion of the world. There was a little bit of uh, perhaps disrespect from Charles Brewer coming into this fight. Did that hype you up? Did that psych you up and make you want to really prove a point? No, not really, because basically I know what I've got. I prove it in the ring. You know, he says it all out the ring. I knew I was going to win. I knew I was going to win. I thought I was going to knock him out. He done well to go the distance. You know, he fought courageously. And uh, basically, I knew tonight I was going to show him I'm the real deal. I'm the number one in the world. I proved it tonight. As far as I'm concerned, Charles Brewer was number two in the world. But like I said all along, I'm number one. He came in and really gave you a test, didn't he? He did. He caught me some good shots. But in the middle of the rounds, I started to get a bit lazy. But remember, I've only done four rounds in the last, over the last 12 months. A lot of it, no disrespect to my last two opponents, but they were in the caliber, obviously, of, of uh, Charles Brewer. So it was a bit of ring rusty, obviously. What I like to do now is obviously keep, keep busy. You know, hopefully get in the ring now, three months' time, keep active. Now, you want to be more active, presumably. Will you be actually getting in that ring quickly and maybe getting over to America to convince the fight public over there in the States? Well, this is Mr. Frank Warren, promoter and manager, who can uh, obviously answer that question for you. Well, Frank? Well, obviously, we're looking at a date in August. We're thinking about August 17th. That's a date that's been mentioned. And, uh, of course, Joe's got to, re you know, got to remain active. That's one of the problems we've had, or he's had, is that you know he, he he's been fighting, he's had injuries, and as a result of that, he's been you know at times not getting the rounds under his belt. But I think that was good for him tonight to so get some distance under his belt. Plus, you know the guy come to fight. He wasn't an opponent that wanted to sit on the floor. I mean, it was you know full full credit to Charles Brewer. He came, he sees opportunity, and tried to take it. But I think Joe's the best around at the moment. And what I'm looking to do now is to make the big fight for him. And the big fight I'd like to make is with uh, Bernard Hopkins. We're speaking to Don King, and Bernard Hopkins said he wanted to fight personally to me. So hopefully uh, we can get that done. Well, Joe Calzaghe versus uh, Bernard Hopkins would be some fight. And well done again tonight, Joe. Well done. Thanks Steve. Very much. Thank you, John. Well, Brewer showed he could take a punch, but Calzaghe dominated every round. It was supposed to be a tough test for Calzaghe, but he made it look easy, Bobby. Well, that's just it, Steve. He made it look easy by his execution. He said by his own admission, Calzaghe, that Brewer was a tough fighter, fought a good hard fight, but he made it look that easy. Brewer failed, and Calzaghe passed with flying colors. And Joe does it in front of his hometown fans. Looking ahead, let's see what boxing coverage is coming up in the near future right here on Showtime.
Next Saturday, April 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, Showbox, the new generation, begins a Showtime boxing doubleheader as Carlos Navarro faces Omar Adorno in a 10-round junior lightweight bout. Then at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, Showtime Championship Boxing presents the return of Clifford the Black Rhino ATN in a 10-round bout with Terrence Lewis. And coming up June 8th on pay-per-view, it's the Heavyweight World Championship as Lennox Lewis faces Mike Tyson. Here in Cardiff, Wales tonight, Joe Calzaghe with a convincing unanimous decision over Charles the Hatchet Brewer. That'll do it for the Cardiff International Arena. For Bobby Chez, John Rowling, our entire crew, Steve Albert saying so long from Cardiff.